This video is on the alternation of generations in plants. Commonly this topic can trip students up. So again, I remind you to that this link below in the description is for the slides, and you're welcome to pause this video and watch it multiple times until you fully understand the concept. The opening image here is a very simplified version, and I have several others throughout the presentation. The key part we want to look at the gametophyte phase and the sporophyte phase. So sporophyte and gametophyte, remember think gametophyte, think producing gametes, and the sporophyte is producing spores. That will help you just with the initial potential for confusion. So what's the basics of this process? Well, the situation is quite different from that in animals. Where in animals, the fundamental process is that a diploid, remember 2N, individual directly produces haploid or N gametes by meiosis. We see that pictured here. So we have a multicellular organism, 2N, directly producing unicellular gametes at one end, and those fuse together to form, again, the multicellular 2N organism. However, now in plants, this alternation of generations in the life cycle, this thus between a diploid, again, 2N generation of sporophytes, and a haploid N generation of gametophytes. So how does this differ? Well, we still have our multicellular sporophyte here, but we have a multicellular gametophyte here, unlike the unicellular in animals. How do we get there? Well, there's a 2N spore, and then there are 1N gametes that are forming this cycle. So this alternation of generations, we see there's a couple more steps involved in plants versus animals. So it's important to keep track of this. Let's go through some examples. So again, this shows you what we're more familiar with in uh, humans here. Sperm and egg coming together through fertilization to form the embryo. That's producing the individual, that's then producing the adult, and the process is repeating. However, here, meiosis is producing male and female spores. But there's a male gametophyte and there's a female gametophyte. These can be multicellular haploid cells. Then through the process of fertilization, they're producing the embryo that's producing the young individual that produces the adult. So there's that extra little step involved compared to that of animals, or in this example, humans. Here's that same image from the beginning. In early plants, plants, meiosis was delayed and the cells of the zygote divided to produce a multicellular diploid structure. This resulted in an alternation of generations in which a diploid generation alternates with a haploid one. So a diploid generation is called the sporophyte. They're going to be producing the spores. And the haploid generation is called the gametophyte. That's going to be producing the gametes. We see that pictured here. Here's our gamete, uh, our gametophytes producing our gametes, which are fusing together to form our zygote, which is going through the process of mitosis to form the sporophyte. Sporophyte goes through a meiosis to produce its spores. The spores then be can become a multicellular gametophyte that then produce gametes and so on and so forth. This upper region here is all haploid. This lower region all diploid. So let's put this into a little bit of a picture here. So the diploid generation is called the sporophyte. Remember the 2N. It's located up here, and this is a moss. Haploid generation is the gametophyte, and that is the example here. So we see the gametophyte being haploid, and that would be an example down here, and the sporophyte here would be the diploid. Now these can look very different. Ferns are um, a very stark example here. Alternation of generations in ferns each can look very different. The sporophytes, what we might be familiar with, with the fronds and the leaves, but the gametophyte actually looks like this. And again, that's the result of the union of spores fusing together to form mitosis. And this gametophyte is going to produce the male and female gametes that will fertilize to provide the developing sporophyte, which will grow into what we're familiar with as our ferns. Unique to ferns, uh, those form the yellowish-brownish mass at the edge or underside of the frond. If you've ever seen the fern, you may have noticed these structures. The shape and arrangement and location of these what's called sori are often valuable cues in identifying a fern. So they're very unique to different fern species. And the sori are that spore-producing structure. If you've ever seen a fern that's got all these little dots under it, those are the sori. So again, this is a great image here. I'm going to repeat and go through some of the steps. So here, diploid zygote, two single-cell haploid gametes, each containing N, unpaired chromosomes, fused to form a single-celled diploid zygote through the process of fertilization. This zygote now contains N pairs of chromosomes, which is 
two n chromosomes in total. Notice the line here says everything's going to be in the two n. This is our first phase of five. Moving along here, getting to our sporophyte, the single cell diploid zygote germinates, dividing by the normal process of mitosis, which maintains the number of chromosomes at 2n. So we see the 2n here. This results in a multicellular diploid organism. This is called a sporophyte because at maturity it produces spores. Again, working our way clockwise around here, getting to the sporangium. When it reaches maturity, the sporophyte produces one or more sporangia which are the organs that produce the diploid spore mother cells or sporocytes. These divide by a special process called meiosis that reduces the number of chromosomes by half. Remember we're crossing this line here. The initial results in four single-celled haploid spores each containing n pairs of chromosomes. And you see here four cells, um, four spores here each being haploid. So we started with 2n, now we're going to each one of these being n and four of them. Moving along, move myself out of the way, single-celled haploid spore germinates dividing by the normal process of mitosis, which maintains the number of chromosomes at n. So we're maintaining in this box this, even though mitosis is occurring, uh, and these cells are dividing, they're still haploid. So there's still haploid cells here. Everything on this side of the line is haploid, remember. The result is a multicellular haploid organism called a gametophyte. And that's the key part here. It's multicellular haploid organism. It's the gametophyte. It's a gametophyte because it produces the gametes. So kind of an easy way to remember that. Progressing here, the last step. When it reaches maturity, the gametophyte produces one or more gametangia, which are the organs that produce haploid gametes. At least one kind of gamete poses some mechanism for reaching the other gamete in order to fuse with it. So I just gave the example here of the sperm and the egg, and I highlight it in the box here. When these come together, that's the process of fertilization. That's going to take an N and an N to form a 2N, which is a diploid zygote, and the process will repeat itself. So I know initially this can be a little confusing. Uh, you may want to review this. Uh, I've found an excellent um, study guide resource here, provided the links here. So again, at the, the description, you can click on the slides and directly click on these links to be able to give you some information here, which I think will be helpful in describing this process. And I tried to go through it in an organized fashion. As I said, you may have to rewatch this or pause it at certain times, but hopefully this was helpful in explaining what is a pretty complex topic.